Dear friends, uh, in the name of the one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Uh, the Christian world has uh, just celebrated what we call in English Easter. But actually, in, in the um, Semitic languages, let's say Arabic, Hebrew, Aramaic, we don't say Easter. We say Fusih. And also we say this in the Latin languages, Pac, Pasqua, Pasquas. So it is the feast of the transition because Pesach in Hebrew means transition of Jesus from death to life. The Jewish Passover was their transition from the slavery in Egypt uh, to freedom, but not immediately to freedom, but through the wilderness and through the passing of the uh, Sea of Reeds. So this celebration it, uh, comes according to the Holy Scripture, because St. Paul, and here is the original text in Hebrew, in his first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 7 to 8, writes literally the following. Let us find the, the text where he talks about our Paschal Lamb. He says, let me see, yeah. Gar to Pascha imon etethi Christos oste eortazomen. Literally, because our Passover Christ has been sacrificed, thus, so, let us celebrate the feast etc etc <clears throat> so here is the original greek koine text what is this feast about it's the sacrificing of christ the lamb our lamb instead of the material lamb of the jewish passover and then this lamb who is Jesus, is a paschal lamb, is a lamb of transition. So, the feast includes the sacrificing of Jesus, or the sacrifice of Jesus, and his resurrection, which is a Passover, which is a passage from death to life. And this is exactly what we in the church celebrate departing from Good Friday until Easter Sunday. Some people claim, well, this is not only the only feast. I mean, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus every single Sunday. Every Sunday, day of the sun, is the Kyriaki. In Greek, from Kyrios, the day of the Lord. How about the word Easter? It is claimed that Easter comes from Ishtar, and that it was a feast of the spring. In the Canaanite, in the pagan world, and then it was adopted, the word was adopted by the Anglo-Saxon word, in the 8th century after Christ. Well, great, you are just saying it's the 8th century after Christ. So, it means that 7 centuries before, it was not known as Easter Sunday. I repeat that even if this is the case, Ishtar is a female 
goddess which we do not recognize, which we do not acknowledge, which we do not worship, which we do not adore at all. And when we say Easter, we have only one thing in mind, the resurrection of Christ, who is the, our rising sun, Easter, you know, East. But anyway, the reference is not English. The reference is the biblical languages, namely Aramaic, Hebrew, and of course, let's say in Greek. So, we have, what do we say? We say the Resurrection Sunday. This is the annual celebration, but I repeat that our every single Sunday is the weekly celebration of Jesus' resurrection. Needless to say, but it, go, it goes without saying, but much better when we do say it, that when we read that Jesus rose from the dead or was risen from the dead, we have two verbs actually. These expressions can only mean one single thing, that his body, which was crucified, which was put to death, which was buried, came again to life. It is the same body which was crucified, because Jesus tells Thomas, this we read in John 20, 25 and following, come Thomas, put your finger in the nail prints, in the place of the nails, nails in the plural, and put your hand or your finger whatever, in my side, where the Roman soldier had uh, thrusted the spear in Jesus' side, probably the right one. So, Jesus showed them, as we read several times in the Holy Gospels, His hands and His feet, meaning what? The hands that were nailed. His feet that were nailed. His side where the spear thrust uh, first pierced by the uh, spear of the Roman soldier. So all these texts also we are not just here to state a fact, a reality confirmed historically and archaeologically because no one has ever been able in Jerusalem to find the so-called corpse of Jesus because he is risen, but also in order to draw the conclusions as St. Paul writes to Colossians 3, 1 and following, since you rose with Christ, so think of the things from above where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. On another occasion, uh, we will uh, explain the meaning of this and other expressions. For the time being, we thank you for your attention. Thanks, Satsuma.